Hello everyone, I'm Eloa, the community manager, and I welcome you to the open beta. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for testing our game. If you have any feedback, please use the forum to share your detailed um, experience, may it be positive or negative or a mix of both. That's the best place to share your feedback so our developer can check it out and answer all of your questions or all of your comments or use the slash report comment if you find in-game any bug or any oddities that you want to react immediately and share your feedback directly with our team. In this video, I will be sharing with you some tips and tricks and some other information to hopefully make your experience better and prepare you to our open beta as best as possible. First of all, know that Embracer Drift is still in development, it's still in beta, that's why you're invited to test our game. So you will encounter some bugs, there's some features that are missing, some features that need to be developed further, and many content that still need to be added to the game. So the product you are visiting today is not the finished product, but we have arrived to a point where we are confident into an experience to share with other players, and the larger public so please enjoy the game share with us what you think about it second Embracer Drift is a different MMORPG experience than the modern MMORPG you are probably playing right now it's a classic MMORPG experience it's heavily inspired from classic tabletop games such as D&D or the first generation of MMORPG like EverQuest, Vanguard, Ultima Online, Dark Age of Camelot, Final Fantasy XI RuneScape or World of Warcraft Vanilla. That being said, we are not trying to emulate or to copy any of those games. We want to offer you a modern classic experience. The game is much slower. It's a slow-paced MMORPG. It's aimed for you to take your time to progress your character, to immerse yourself into the world and to have a real journey. There's no reason to rush. Take your time. Enjoy. While it's absolutely possible to play our game solo and to progress your character absolutely by yourself from level 1 to level 50, that's not the purpose of our game. We have really developed our game to encourage you to make friends, to play with other players and to group up. Every feature of the game is aimed to encourage you to cooperate with other players. So my recommendation will be to try that out as early as possible. Take maybe the first two levels to explore the game by yourself and to understand the first step of our game in our system and then create some group. Join some other player and if you don't have a friend to tag along, make new friends. That's why our game is created. To allow our player to create wonderful memories with other player and to build long-lasting friendship. The first things I recommend you to do to improve your experience is before to even log into the game is to check out the option in the menu over here and to select the best quality option for your graphic card for your your computer so we do have high fidelity for a really good computer balanced performance or put it to so if you have a very low uh, computer check that out you can also uh, change a little bit the slider know that what require the most performance is obviously the view distance the shadow distance and the grass distance unless you really have a super badass machine i do recommend you to augment that you can check out the FPS limiter as well. I personally use 30 FPS because I'm recording and streaming. For a content creator, this is probably the best option. We do also have an exposure adjustment. This will increase the darkness of the night. So if you want a very dark night, you go to the end of the slider, otherwise put it there. Obviously you also have the keybind. This might be something that you want to try out, especially if you do not have an American keyboard. If you are European, there's some buttons that doesn't work, especially if you have a very different layout. So you might want to explore this and rebind everything you would like to. 
If it's the first time you're playing the game, I really recommend you to not hide the tutorial pop-up. Those tutorial pop-up will give you a lot of precious information that will guide you for your first step into the game. If you're an experienced player, you may want to hide it. As you can see, we have beautiful autumn color because now we do have season in the game. It's one of the new things. In the character creation, you will have three slots for three different characters. That's great because we do have three roles, defender, striker and supporter. That being said, um, you may want to do three supporter, who knows. You will always have the possibility to edit your appearance afterwards and this at will, it doesn't cost you anything. When you create your first character, enjoy the sliders, enjoy to create new character, you have plenty of options. It's quite funny. Different haircuts, hairstyle in three parts. Do not forget your favorite color. This is something a lot of players forget. Do not forget to choose your favorite color or you will be in white and everyone will know that you didn't know the option. You can choose three different roles, defender, striker and supporter. I'm here with my supporter. Be careful of the base role that you're choosing because that one you will never be able to change. The three different roles divide in three different class. So we do have nine class in all. So you can always forget your class once you have choose it. That being said, it comes to a sacrifice. So here I am a duelist. If I wanted, I could forget duelist. In that case, I will lose all of my progression as duelist and go back to level six. So I could learn to become a sentinel, but I will be a level six sentinel. That being said, my base role, so supporter, will keep my progression. So right now I'm level 18. So I will be a level 6 sentinel, but a level 18 supporter. Meaning that I will still be capable of doing level 18 content and wear my level 18 equipment. And therefore I will be level faster, my sentinel. So the progression is having a kind of catch up mechanism. So all in all, it is absolutely possible to forget a class and to learn a new one, but it is something you have to be mindful of. The ideal moment to try out different class to see which one you prefer is between level 6 and level 10. After that, it's a little bit more complicated. Each role does have access to three different sets of weapons that are defined to them. For example, supporter have a sword and banner, a crossbow or a quarter staff. Defender we have sword and board, polarm and two-hander mace. While striker will have access to bow, two one-hander like two dagger or two one-hander sword or two-hander sword and axe. This allows you to recognize easily the class of the NPC when you encounter them. You know what class an NPC is just by seeing their weapon. Same thing with players, of course. The first things you want to do when you're playing the game is to open your map. Here my map is absolutely complete. But you will see that yours is empty. You will have to discover things as you go. You explore the area and then it will reveal them on your map. Your map will allow you to direct yourself easily, relatively easily, because this is an approximative map. It's been drawn, it is not precise. To guide you, you have the big planet in the sky that can sometimes be hidden by clouds, so you have to pay attention to that. But we have a big blue planet in the sky and it always indicates you the north. Therefore, combined with the map, with the little wind cross over here and the planet, you know in which direction you have to go. If you observe the landscape, if you observe your map and you observe the sky, you can direct yourself. It's a much more immersive way than following the GPS that you have in other games. That being said, it requires a little effort from you. Here, you are by an embering, 
The ember ring will always be highlighted in blue when you buy them. So if you find yourself lost and you really need to know where you are, find an ember ring. Usually you can see their smoke from afar and then you will see where you are on your map. This also gives you a good indication to refine your way. We do not have quest marker on the top of the head of the quest giver, therefore you do not really know where they are. You will have to speak with people to actually see if there is a quest that they can give you. This is our way to let you immerse yourself fully into the world. For now we do not have a quest journal, therefore your only solution to see the progress of your quest is to type the command list objective. Let's speak of the interface. You will see here your action bar to change your spell, to drag them you have to click shift and then you can swap them space. Same thing with your consumable, you have 4 slots for consumable and 4 slots for region. Here it's the bar with your buff and debuff. As you can see here I have a buff on myself. You will find it next to your targets, defensive target as well. You can move every element of your interface the way you want them to be. Let's see how the combats work. To recognize your target, you will see different things. The first thing is to see the chevron that you have next to a target. For example, this is a one chevron creature. It is aimed for solo player. But here just behind you have three chevron creature. Three chevron is aimed for a full group of four to six person. You also have two chevron creature. Those are aimed for a small group of 2 to 3 player. Now you also have the color that gives you an indication related to your level. Green means that it's below my own level, so I should not have any problem to, to kill those creatures, but they will give me less experience. Blue is one level below me, white is exactly my level, yellow is one level above me, and red is two to more level above me. Red start to be difficult. A lot of my attack will resist. Con controlled and dots are not working anymore. And if the target is too high, in comparison of my level, I will not be able to hit it at all. When you are fighting, your position is important, especially depending of the weapon you're using. The front position the side position and the rear position. Each does have a different color that indicates you which position is the best related to the weapon you're using. Mm. The bonus of your position is changed by different things. First you have your roll positional bonus. For example, as a duelist, I have plus 5 or more damage when I'm on the side and plus 3 or more damage when I am on the rear. But it also changed depending weapon. For example, with my staff, I have plus 38 when I'm in front, and with my crossbow, I have plus 5 damage on the size and 15 hits when I'm on the rear. Each weapon will have different bonuses, and each roll does have different bonuses as well. What you can see is that my combat stats, I do have the flanking stats that you can acquire on your equipment. Flanking is increasing the bonuses of your positional bonus. So let's take this again. So plus 15 hits and plus 12 because I do have plus 12 flanking. Something very useful is the fact that you can have a defensive target and an offensive target. So I can heal myself while continuing to attack this doe. Which is very convenient, especially as a supporter. 
Another very important aspect of the combat is the use of region. You will find the region on certain specific mobs. Every role and every class have one ability that use region. The region will increase the power of your ability. For example, as a supporter, my first ad use some region. My region is adding plus 5 heal to my heal. As a duelist, I have my patch, which is also using region. You can toggle your region on and off. You have also different level of quality in your region. So that's the first level of salve for my first edge. This is the second level of salve for my first edge. You can see here, plus five damage mod and there, plus nine damage mod. So you can also decide which one you want to use depending on the situation. You will also gather some region for other player, keep them on for your alt or to exchange them with other player. The region is a very important aspect of combat and in future you will be able to transform your region with the ember essence that you're collecting in your ember stone this is the way we are doing magic in ember drifts it's called not called magic it's called alchemy but you got my point oh no i fall in combat this is really annoying if someone is by me they can use the smelting salts that you can find here the salt to put me back up on my feet but if there's no one i will have to give up and i will respawn at a closer respawn point here i'm at the city i've acquired a wound because i fall in combat five percent for falling into combat and ten more because i have respawn so now i just have to sit by the embering to restore my wounds. You will see that my stamina and my life are regenerating pretty fast while my wound is starting to be removed. Acquiring a wound can be really annoying because it's 10% less maximum hit point that I have. When you adventure a lot, you will also acquire wound for your stamina. Then again, the only way to remove it is to sit by an embering. You can improve the regeneration and the buff of an embering by throwing some smoldering ashes into it. Unfortunately, I do not have any to show you. Now, if I want to recuperate my bag, I will have to follow the little arrow that I have over here that will give me an indication of the distance where my bag is. I do have two solutions related to my bag. Either I will get it back or I can also forfeit the bag content and then I will lose everything I have in my bag, including my money. I can see my bag from here. There's a little shiny effect to help me to find it. There it is. My bag is over here and now I have recuperated it. Let me speak to you about our equipment. You can find equipment either by looting them from mobs, especially humanoid, but also animals. And yes, I know it's not immersive, but it's more balanced for the overall experience of the game. Or you can craft them. Certain items can only be found on loot and some other items can only be crafted. We have spread the equipment through those two means, making those two means, crafting and looting, both meaningful and exciting for players. You will see that some equipment slots are surrounded by a golden square. Those equipment actually have some weight, while the other one, the cloak, the shirt, the pants, the boots or the gloves, are not surrounded by a gold thread and will not have any weight. However, they do have some stats, so they are very interesting. Your maximum or more weight depend on your role and on your class. The classes and roles that can wear the most armor are defender, followed by supporter, and the striker are the least. If you go over your maximum weight, you will start to lose 
in combat movement and movement. So, it is very important to pay attention to your armor weight and to equip the equipment that are the most useful for you with the most interesting stats and the least armor weight, obviously. You will also find that you can equip the bracers, the greaves, or the shoulders one by one, meaning that you can have two different swords, you can have asymmetric look, and you can really combine your equipment to have the best statistic or to have the best look possible. Note that at the moment there is still some armor that do not have visual. You can also hide or show your helm or hide or show your ember stone. I will be talking about your ember stone later. You have two bags, one bag for your gathering material and one bag for everything else. The bag with everything else the actual bag is something that you can lose when you fall into combat. However, you will always keep the gathering bag. You do have an option to have your both bag opening together. Where it is? Open bag and gathering bag together. You can take that off or on as you prefer. You start the game with very little storage space. You will find your personal stash in most uh, camp. You can increase your personal stash rows by purchasing additional row. You also have an account bank uh, that's shared between your different character. You will only find those bank next to the wall on New Haven Valley or in Northridge. That costs a lot of money, but it's also very useful, especially if you're crafting. This allows you to transfer it in between character. You can also store some uh, silver. When you're repairing at the blacksmith, it will show how much silver you have available, how much money you have available. That being said, it is show both what you have in your bag and what you have in your personal storage. So be careful if you are trying to save some money. You will find plenty of merchants to sell everything you have to sell. That being said, in some case, you will have to click on the table instead. This is because we are populating the world step by step and we do not have NPCs everywhere. We do have three gathering profession and three crafting profession that will be increased soon too but for now you have three of them you can learn three different craft the first one is when you start your adventure the second one at level 6 and the third one at level 12. for example on this character i'm a hunter which is a gathering profession that will provide for me some carcass from animals that I can transform then in different things. I'm also an outfitter and a provisioner. At the crafting station you will have access to all your crafts. Here is to refine as a hunter the carcass that I have found into the world. I can change them in bone, pelt, leather or meat. All of those different parts will serve different profession. Meat will serve provisioner, obviously, while leather and, and bone, uh, while leather will be used for outfitting and bones for weaponsmithing. As an outfitter, for example, I can create some light leather folds. Here I have my leather, I can choose another one if I have some other, but I can also choose to add an optional flux. You can see the stat that it has. And if I add the flux, it has better stat. So as you can see, the ember flux are really precious. In the community, it's the etiquette that everyone need on those, but maybe ask to your group if they agree on that. Through your travel, you will find those formation of ember. They are the ember monolith. Once you discover them, they will be shown on your map. There's one per zone and can be used to fast travel between zones. At the moment they are free, but in future you will have to pay something for it.
We do have various activities for you to do with your friends, some content that is aimed specifically to full group. You will find several areas in the world and in every zone that can be considered as open dungeon. They do have a concentration of more challenging mobs as well as some rare named bosses that can appear randomly sometimes. They of course contain very nice loot to get. We do have two underground dungeons. The first one is in New Haven Valley and is targeted to new players starting at level 4. Join with a group of friends and explore the depths of the central vein. This is of course more challenging content. Those dungeons are not instanced, so you may encounter a second group. In Northridge is situated the second dungeon. Then again, there is two entrance to find it. It's a little bit more complex and more labyrinthic, but also contain a lot of challenging mobs to defeat, but also some rare named bosses that can pop randomly in different places. The particularity of the Northridge dungeon is that you do have also some random entrance that are ember drifts. If you find an ember drift, you never know how long it will stay in the world. Gather your friend, enter in it and clear up the special area of the dungeon that is unique to those ember drifts. A new fun little addition is the flatworm. The flatworm is a little creature that comes with different color. It's very fast, so you will have a hard time to catch it up. But if you do, and you cannot target it, you have to walk on it, you will have a very excellent buff that lasts for 30 minutes. Oh, look, 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 look! A flatworm, guys! Look, this is a flatworm. Oh, yes. Oh, but it's... Oh, no, 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 it was too beautiful to be true. I was thinking, oh, but it's going to be uh, easy to get. It's going to be easy to get. Yeah, I got it. A red one is health regen. Okay. We do have five zones to explore as we speak and more are being developed. So enjoy your time in the open beta and see how far you can get. Thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope it contains some useful information and that it helped you to have a more comfortable experience in our open beta. But mostly, I hope that you are enjoying yourself in our open beta weekend. If you enjoy the open beta and want to continue to play your character during the remaining of the beta up to launch, we do offer very often some beta keys. So keep in touch on our social media or check out our content creator that have some beta key to share. I personally share one beta key every Friday during the weekly community show that you can follow on my Twitch TV channel. It starts at 6 p.m. Central Europe time or 11 a.m. CDT. So check the link below, you will find uh, the, the link towards my channel. And if you really enjoyed our game, if you're convinced that something that you will enjoy at launch, feel free to pre-order it. It does help our studio and we are very, very grateful for every new beta tester that has pre-ordered our game and supported our project. Thanks again, take care of yourself and I hope to see you soon in game. Bye.